Well, good morning and welcome to my channel. I'm Jennifer. Warren is hiding out behind me here and this is a country life. And do you guys remember last week when I showed that we had gone to pick up the bumblebees and then Warren was setting out all of the bumblebee hives? Well, there's still some bees in there. There are still some bumblebees in there. Yes, there are. Um, see that rope there? So he put bungees or ropes, or not bungees, but um, uh, what are those called? Some kind of strap, like ratchet straps or something, right? Is that what you put over some of them? Ropes and straps. Yeah, ropes, mainly ropes. Okay, There's so anyway, he just he he puts the um, you know he ties the down the hives underneath the little huts. Well, a couple of days ago. What happened? We I guess I'll let you say it again. We had a bear come in. There's still some bees in here. There are still some bees. And I'm not going to mess with it. <laughs> he was going to clean up the mess. You have a bumblebee that's coming up. I see. They are you coming. Move. You got them uh, They are coming towards me. All right. Maybe we're not going to clean that up. <laughs> all right. See the well, bees. See them? Yeah, they're all just. They're a little ticked. That was crazy because there were none flying around, and as soon as we got out, they were just like, "Okay, we're here." Well, they're letting us know that they were still there. Well, so Warren thought that he was going to clean this mess up because he assumed that all of those bumblebees had flown off, and yeah, well. The bear pretty much destroyed the colony, and I, I felt that the queen probably went into the woods to nest, but it appears that maybe the queen is still here. Yeah. I don't know. Well, we're just going to have to leave it alone. Okay. I don't want to really get stung. So you can see the fence right there, um, down in the south um, southwest west corner. He so he did a drive around looking at the fence to try to figure out what where it might have come in because I mean obviously the fence is still intact here, and if a bear climbed over that it would you'd know it you would know it, <laughs> but he did find a spot where it might have dug, dug under underneath yeah dug dug under the um, Let's look fence. Let's at this one down here. And it you looks stay like, inside. I'm yeah, gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna stay inside this time. And it looks like the bear is not choosy because both brands of bumblebees got attacked. This one they actually broke the board. Let's see. What is that extra two? That extra plywood down there? Uh, I think I had that as a, a leveling shim. Oh, I see. Okay. Well, let's see what happens here if bees, I see ants. So this one they didn't pull out from under the rope, but they did move the whole, they did move the whole hut. They got the, oh, I see. Do you see that one? I see one, finally. Are there two? Do I dare roll my window down? Yeah, so here is more of the mess. You can see like that liquid there, that is, that is their food. And there's actually a bee right on the end. Of that little spout there. I can hear bees inside there. <clears throat> I am not gonna mess with that. Mm-hmm. See them around the box? Yeah, I see them all around the box there. They're around like the nozzle of the like the feed. Yeah. That liquid. But even food. On the, see on the box over Oh there. over there now, yeah. Ooh, there's some on the inside too. Yeah. Okay, well I guess there's still some here, but uh we're just gonna leave it be. I'll clean it up at the end of pollination season and go from there. Yeah. Yeah, they're definitely still around. Like, as soon as we come over, they start... It takes them about three minutes, and then they just all start coming out. Yep. 
All right, well, I guess we're not gonna clean that up today. Question is, will they actually pollinate or are they so disrupted that they're just, you know, in their last days? Right. You know, cause their colony is all tore apart. So right. do they still kinda put things back together or? Yeah, I don't know. And so the other thing that we wanted to go take a look at are the honeybees. So the honeybees came in last night. They come in in the middle of the night, which sometimes when you say that to somebody, they're kind of surprised. They go, well, why did they come in the middle of the night? Uh, is that me? Am I <laughs> supposed to explain? You're supposed to explain. Okay. Well... <clears throat> The worker bees, they're out foraging during the day, so then they come back to the hive at night, and so you want to transfer the hive at night because the largest majority of bees are actually in the hive. If you would try to move the hives during the day, you'd have the queen and some workers, but most of the workers would be gone, so out foraging. And this way, they bring them in at night, and the bees are more or less sleeping relatively and uh, they place the hives and then when the sun comes up and things warm up, they come out and they start searching for flowers. So I see activity. I'm gonna try to, oh, I can't roll my window down. Well, okay. I guess you're gonna roll it down. So the worker bees right now are out foraging. Um, if we would come back here uh, late afternoon, it would uh, it would just be a cloud of bees trying to re-enter the hive. So um, that's kind of neat to see at that time of day. But right now, they're out. Yep, as soon as the sun comes up. The bees are out. And so for the honeybees here, we actually rent those. The bumblebees, we purchase, and then they're, they're ours. We have to set them they, you have to pick them up, you have to set them in place, you have to lock them down, you have to just do everything. But with uh, uh, honeybees like this, they're actually rented. And so, like Warren doesn't have to do anything with the honeybees. You don't, he, he has to make sure that there's a spot available for them. And he has to set flags at each end to let them know where they want the bees. But other than that, they come and they check them, what, every... Every couple weeks. About every couple weeks they'll come, the, the beekeeper will come, check the hives, make sure that they're healthy, mm -hmm. I guess is what they're mm -hmm. checking for. And, um, and then at the end of pollination season, then they come and pick them up. So this retaining wall is here because, like, what, what was happening? What were you trying to fix? Well, basically, I was getting erosion under the uh, main line because mm -hmm. the bulkhead is a little short for the dike, but it's what I had. Yep. And I didn't want to buy a new one, so I used the old fence posts from the old fence to build a retaining wall. And uh, those steel poles I have driven into the ground about three feet, and uh, that's what holds holds it all back. And that way, I was able to get dirt under the main line and support the dike and still the the bulkhead can function as it should without causing erosion. And where did the steel pipes come from? Those were actually the pipes that were originally uh, earmarked for a cattle grate on the north driveway. Mm -hmm. But then we Decide. changed our mind yep. and so then I've had them on my steel rack for just a project like this. Mm -hmm. I mean, you always want to reuse when you can, so when you take down an old fence, you don't throw away the treated posts, you put them on a pile. This would be considered good junk. <laughs> See, this is from the good junk pile. Uh-huh, Because you take good junk and you make it into something. Today I'd like to introduce you to Seed Health. Thank you to them for sponsoring this portion of today's video. If you've been around the internet here for a while, you know that probiotics, at least the word probiotic, uh, has really just taken the internet by storm. Probiotic, prebiotic, DSO-1, daily symbiotic, 
is a proprietary blend. It is a 24 strain broad spectrum probiotic and prebiotic. It was developed specifically not just for digestive health, but to go beyond that with systemic benefits. And you might be asking yourself, what in the world does that mean? Systemic benefits. Well, systemic benefits means that DSO-1 is good for skin health, heart health, it helps us to synthesize the micronutrients in our body. And it's special because the capsule is a two-in-one. It has an outer capsule, which is the prebiotic, and has an inner capsule, which is the probiotic. It's important to get the probiotic actually to the colon. And if it already starts digesting in the stomach, then you're not going to get 100% of all of those good bacteria to your colon, which is where you actually need it. When you hear the word gut, it does not refer to your stomach health. It refers to your small and large intestine. So you need that two-in-one capsule. It's called a via cap. And that way that it can slowly break down in the stomach, the outer portion of the capsule, and then the inner portion where you have all of that good bacteria is breaking down actually in the colon where it needs to. DSO-1 promotes healthy regularity. We know what that means, right? Good, easy poops. It helps to ease bloat. It's basically formulated to help your gut thrive. In the first jar, you get a 30-day supply. When you reorder, it comes in a biodegradable pouch so that you don't have all that extra shipping material and you basically just open up the pouch, pour them into your glass jar, and you are good to go. And can you believe that the insulator that comes with the refill packs is made from U.S. grown non-GMO cornstarch? What that means to you is that it's biodegradable, it's backyard compostable, it is edible, uh, should I eat it? And it also dissolves in water. <laughs> and if you are in need of some gut health support yourself, Click on the first link in the description box below. Get 20% off your first month's supply of Seeds DSO-1 Daily Symbiotic. You can use my code Jennifer20 and that will get the best discount. We are starting out our morning at piano. And Joe is in his lesson right now. And Maria and I are gonna play this game. I do have my computer charging over here. Uh, usually I will spend this time editing. It's a great time for me to um, get about 45 minutes of editing in. But we're going to play King Domino first. I remember it being a very fun game. It's been a while since I've played this, but I don't remember. I don't remember how to play it, Maria. It's okay. So how come you have some of these out over here and some over there? Because this is what we're going to start with, and I just put those aside. Oh, yeah. And they said that you should do them all first. Okay, okay, okay. And then, like, you can just pull them over. Okay. Set in the directions. So we're trying to make kingdoms. Is that correct on this? Yeah. Yes. All right. Well, we're going to play King Domino, and we'll be back. Okay, and then you get your pink maples and your pink castle. And okay. I'm yellow. Boy, I really do not remember how to play this. It's okay. And you can place it wherever you want in your kingdom. It can be in a corner, it can be in the center, it can be wherever you want. Okay. Your castle can be like anywhere. We each built our kingdom, now we have to multiply out. Pen or pencil? It doesn't matter to me, whatever. And now we have to multiply out our points. If you have only one square that has three crowns, do I get to go three times one? Yeah. And that's that's points? Yeah. Awesome. Okay. You got 26? 26. And I've got 30. Well, that was a good game. Yeah. That was fun. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> so something I've been doing with Joe lately is writing him little notes. And so today, this was my little note. 
we're at piano. I went to go use the bathroom and I came back and this is the first time he's written me a little letter back. Every other time he just writes mom. He doesn't write anything else, but today I got a hi mom. That, I, I am just tickled. I am just tickled. <laughs> Thanks for writing me a note, Joe. Huh? <laughs> Thank you. Huh? <laughs> All right, well we're trying out a bakery today. We well, we've been here once, but that was when it was right before it closed, and now it's reopened, so we're going to go give it a try. Oh, it looks similar. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Ooh. How are you today? Great. Great. Oh, my goodness. It looks delicious. Look at those cookies. Oh, Which one are you going to get? Um, that's the chocolate peanut butter cup that you saw. Yeah, and about our an M and M cookie for you. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, and M. It's been a while since we've been shopping at Walmart as a group, right? Yeah. And, and we're getting ready, or Maria's getting ready for what? A friend's birthday. A friend's birthday, so, so she found all kinds of fun this things. This is like a little canvas, but it's a magnet on the back. Which is really cool. And then this little paint kit to go with oh. it. And then yes, a watercolor paint book. Which has like I fun <laughs> food, food with faces Uh huh. to paint. And we picked up some cereal again, and I got Peter some cherries he's gonna be so happy and we picked up strawberries we're out of popcorn kernels you know what I always call these popcorn seeds and Warren laughs at me when I put popcorn seeds oh, on, the, on the grocery list anyway picked up some of these little ant baits because oh. ants are becoming a problem and some corn on the cob just enough to have with our supper tonight and we have my grandson's birthday is coming up so we found one of these little things as well as some shorts. Yeah. Emily said he could use some plain colored shorts. So it's kind of hard to find his size, but we did find a couple pair. And everyone wants to try on hats. America! Nice! <laughs> <laughs> you guys are, go are goofy. So I put a few extra things in my cart before we went up to the checkout. Some quick food, you guys. I mean, in my opinion, there's a place for this. So I did get some corn dogs, and we have a night this week where Warren and I have, uh, we have a business dinner to go to, and so the kids are gonna be home. And if I don't have anything left over, sometimes I like to have them have something like this, some chicken nuggets or some corn dogs. I also picked up some taquitos. So just a few things to make it easy on them when they are home and have to make kind of a supper. Or I know I've said this before, but if I am out doing like gardening or something like that, sometimes, you know, and the kids would much rather go into the house. I mean, that is just a given. They don't want to be out there weeding with me or whatever it is. I mean, for a certain amount of time, sure. But after a while, they're, you know, I can hold out a lot longer than they can. Uh, anyway, sometimes I can just say, hey, Peter, can you go and make some chicken nuggets for lunch? And then when I get up here, you know, we can open up some applesauce and carrot sticks or something like that. And it's just, uh, it's nice to have. Also at the bakery, I picked up Still Warm. I picked up some hamburger buns and I also picked up some of their homemade white bread. I have had people ask questions before in comments. If I have a recipe for homemade hamburger buns, why do I buy hamburger buns? Well, <laughs> sometimes that's kind of a funny question because I'm like, you know what? There's a lot of things that we all know how to do, but yet we do end up buying it. A lot of times it's for convenience. Um, so I like to buy just all the hamburger buns. I like to pop them in the freezer, have them on hand for if I want to make some quick ham sandwiches or all of a sudden we're like, hey, we want burgers. And sometimes you don't like decide that until shortly before, right? And so you just want to have something quick. Sometimes, like in this case with going, getting the bakery stuff here, this was more expensive than either making it myself or getting it at Aldi. But I like to support that local business. I have days, right, where I want to be in the kitchen and I want to make homemade hamburger buns. So then I will make them myself. I mean, I realize that I put my life out there. I realize that people are going to comment and wonder all kinds of things. And 
I, I really don't mind addressing them. I know after I address something like this, I will get lots of you who support me through the thick and the thin of it. <laughs> you will say things like, only answer the questions you want to, Jennifer, and you don't have to explain yourself to anyone. And you're right, I don't. I don't mind, though. I don't mind answering the questions. Um, I don't, I, I just don't mind. So I hope that that was clear on why sometimes I buy things for convenience and sometimes I make things because I want to. <laughs> Yeah, when this folds in, it might come into about here. You might have to use another piece. I just took a moment here before heading out to the garden to put together supper for tonight. This is a new recipe, hamburger vegetable hot dish. We'll see. The whole recipe is in another video that's coming for you guys. It is just a gorgeous, gorgeous day today. I think it's something like 80, maybe 82 degrees. I don't know, but it is so wonderful out here and I've been wanting to get outside. What is that? <laughs> You just never know what those kids have planned, what kinds of projects and games that they have going on. Anyway, okay, hair is in my mouth. Ugh. Ugh. My hands are full. I've got stuff. I've got fertilizer and seeds because I'm heading down to the garden. I'm going to give you guys a little tour. I was down here and I got like plants planted out. Um, I think that was last week Thursday and so I wanted to come through and I think I mentioned this to you last week or in that video I said you know what sometimes it's best to just kind of walk away for a while and then come back and see how everything is doing and that's what I did and I can see that I've got some white Tinning of my tomato plants. That means it's time to get some fertilizer onto them. And I'm going to use these Job's fertilizer spikes. These are for house plants. They have a high nitrogen uh, level. Let me see. They are. This is a 1345, so high nitrogen. That's going to be good for the tomato plants at this point. I do want to pick up some of these plant spikes. Um, they have for flowering plants, and I'm guessing there's a vegetable one as well. I'm going to look and see what I can find. So anyway, I'm gonna get these pushed in to the tomato plants, at least as many as I can. I'm just gonna give one by each plant. Just push it in there. Yep, just like that. And that is going to be very helpful in giving them some much needed fertilizer right now. So the pumpkins that I planted, they are growing new leaves already. Um, looking really nice. Here's another one. It's got one yellow leaf that looks like it's been chewed, but otherwise it's growing new leaves right down in there. But then just seven feet over are the watermelons, and they're horrible. We've had lots of rain over the last couple of days. That one isn't even the worst. Look at this one. It's just like completely wilted, which is kind of weird because the soil is plenty moist, but the plant has that wilted, like I don't have any moisture in my leaf anymore. So I don't really know what's going on with those watermelons. The cantaloupe over here looked to be doing well. Here's one of them. Oh yeah, new leaves coming underneath there. There's another new leaf. Yeah, so, oh, uh-oh, we got something. Maybe that's what's going on. Look at chewing, chewing, 
all kinds of chewing. Since on this half of the garden, the weed guard fabric had blown up again, like every year it, it does that on this half of the garden always, uh, from the spring winds. I am not gonna put it back down. I'm going to be, you know, gathering all of this up. And what I'm doing is I'm planting my green beans here along where I would oftentimes have tomatoes. And I'm hoping that maybe those wires offer a little bit of support for the green beans. Sometimes they get pretty big and they start to want to topple over. Also, I didn't want there to be the weed guard fabric because I've had two years in a row of really poor bean production. And I'm just wondering if it's from the fabric. Maybe the hole wasn't big enough and it was shading um, when the plant was trying, when the seed was trying to germinate. I don't know. I do know I'm doing it differently this year. I'm going to go back to my old ways. I have a row of beans here, and I think that's all the seed I have right now, which is kind of a bummer because I really wanted to have like three rows of beans if I could. It's okay. It's okay. Then what I'm going to do is after these germinate, if I end up with another row or whatever I end up putting over here, I'm going to come down with the weed barrier fabric once everything germinates and then I'm going to cover the centers. So I'll still have to weed around individual rows up close, but the weed guard fabric will be in the rows where I would walk and that's just gonna save, I think, some weeding time there. So trying things a little bit different this year, you know, that's how it is with gardening. You're just, every year you're trying it a little bit different, trying to be a little bit better at it, see if a new idea works out or not. And then you have to go back to what you were doing. So I'm gonna use something called carrot tape. And I bought mine from Jung's Seed, or Jung Seed Company, uh, which actually is pretty local. It's over in, well, it says Randolph, Wisconsin, but they have a big store in Stevens Point as well. I order, though I rarely go to the store. And so this carrot tape, the seeds, let me turn this over so you can see better. The seeds are all right in there. Do you see? Like there's a little seed right there. It's sometimes hard to see. It's better over there. So there's some seeds and you just have to bury this about a quarter to a half inch deep and then you have to keep it well watered, nice and moist, for at least a week and or until the seeds sprout. Then you can water it as normal. Uh, but the nice thing is that the seeds are already spaced out so you don't have to do all the thinning that is very, very normal with carrots seeds because they're so fine it's just sometimes hard to get them thinned without disturbing the roots of the plant next to it. So as usual, down in the garden always takes me longer than I think it's going to take. Because I get, you know, I get monkey in with this and monkey in with that. <laughs> so I'm so happy that I had that casserole ready to go and that I put that together after lunch. Because I just ran in, I got it in the oven about 20 minutes later than I had wanted to get it in. But that's, that's how it is. That's how summer is. And now I'm back down to the garden. I really just have to do the onions yet. And I have another bag of onions over here. Where's my other bag of onions? Here's my other bag. I have another bag of onions. And I think these are red onions. I have a system up in the shed with twine between two pieces of lath that I can stretch between the two. Um, to keep straight line. I think I would bring that down. Of course not. Once I'm down here, I'm like, I'm down here. I just want to get moving. And that's pretty much how I attack all of life. <laughs> all right, so onions, onions, onions. That's where I'm at. 
All right, onions are in, and I just pulled out the weed guard fabric that had been blowing around in the spring winds, and I'm just gonna get this all untangled. I might see if I can grab Peter. I'm gonna see how this goes, it's just one person, and if it doesn't go well, then I'm gonna grab Peter and see if he can uh, give me a hand with this. But I, what I wanna do is untangle this, get it all um, smoothed out, see what is actually salvageable to put down in between my rows of beans, and carrots and onions and then and then I'll probably try to roll it ouch oh owie 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 and then honeybees came today <laughs> actually they came at about I think three o'clock in the morning they always come in the middle of the night and boy the, the some of them are ornery and they are just all over in the garden here so yeah I might try to roll this up we'll see how that goes we'll see all right I'm gonna have to take a break from that because ooh, I see Joe ran down to get the mail on his bike and he's walking his bike back and trying to carry mail. So I'm gonna go catch up with him and see what's going on because I surely don't want him to have dropped mail on his way back. I was just walking up to the yard here, got the mail from Joe and our yard looks like we're getting ready to have an auction. <laughs> Semi is out. Tractors, the van with the trailer. Oh my goodness. Oh, and another tractor over there. I don't know what is going on here today. So Warren is fertilizing today. I was hoping to go catch up with him, but it is already getting close to supper. I need to shuck this corn. Um, I, I told the kids that they could go in and watch something on TV for a little while because they were, oh, so hot and tired from all the work. <laughs> they worked with me for like, 15 minutes down in the garden. But yeah, we got we got all of the black fabric that I wanted to keep. We got that rolled up so that we can lay it out in between the rows when the seeds germinate. And chick, 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 chickens, they are excited because they know that I am bringing them a treat, <laughs> right? Huh, you girls know I'm bringing a treat? Huh? All right, I'm walking by the bees hoping <laughs> that they don't sting me. There's a lot of buzzing going on around me right now and I'm not really liking it. Okay, but I wanted to get out here and get some uh, video of Warren here. So he is fertilizing right now. And so you can see his tracks here, that's where he went in. And so then he just drives down, he has a ramp right here. When I say a ramp, it goes over the ditch so there's a tube underneath there so that the water can get all the way around the bed. But then he just drives right down that track and he has it calculated out how fast he has to go on the four-wheeler to get the right um, pounds per acre of, of fertilizer. Yeah, I don't really know what else to say about that. That is, that is fertilizing. So those are actually what we call traps, moth traps. And so what Warren does is he checks those twice a week and he'll open those up and each one has a different little, kind of like a little gummy bear, I guess you might call it, or maybe even you might just call it a cappy racer uh, inside there. And that holds a pheromone, which attracts a particular moth. And each one is different and like Spargs, Black-Headed Fireworm, and what's the other one? Why can't I think of what it is right now? Anyway, uh, he'll tell us later when we, when we catch up with him after supper and go for a little ride around. But then it attracts those moths, and then those moths, he keeps track of their flight. He counts the number of moths, and he can track their, um, he can track their cycle, their life cycle, as to when it's time to spray for that particular larva. So he's tracking the moths because the moths are what lay the eggs and the eggs are what turn into the larva, Ugh, fly on me, and that's what he needs to get rid of because it's actually the larva or like the little caterpillar, it's the little worm that chews on the leaves or on the skin of the cranberries and you have to get rid of those, otherwise you have no crop. <laughs> so that is basically moth traps in a nutshell. So now he's coming down his middle run. So he has two side runs in this bed and a middle run. Um, and each bed 
some beds only have two. I think I know that he has some beds that have four runs. And it's just all based on the size of the cranberry bed. They're not all exactly the same. And so, you know, each one has to have kind of like its own, I don't want to say rules, but it has its own little set way of doing things. So apparently on this bed, part way down, he needs to put in some more fertilizer in the hopper. So he has that loaded on the back of the four-wheeler and he gets it down there from on the back of his truck and he's got the trailer. Mary Jo's big one. Uh-huh. Do you need some help getting that? Uh, I would. Big. You're going to get it? Okay, get it. How many huge one? There is some rice, yeah? There's potatoes, rice. I thought I saw mashed potatoes. Or Mom. Oh, Mom. ceramic. Yes, I see yours, Joe. It looks fantastic. Mm-hmm. Yep, thanks. We got your thumb in there. And Maria, she's going to try with a teaspoon of meat. <laughs> a teaspoon. This is called hamburger vegetable hot dish. Yippee. Yippee. <laughs> Supper is all done and boy was that casserole hot dish. It was called hamburger vegetable hot dish. That was tasty. It didn't even require a prompt at all. I didn't even have to say to Warren, what do you think of this? And then he kind of is like, well, yeah, this was good or no, it was. He took a few bites and he's like, that's good. <laughs> he was a little skeptical at first because of course he walked in and saw it. He's like, new recipe again? I was like, yeah, two days in a row, lucky you. So, all right, well, something that has been happening like every week, I think this is the third week in a row, that one night after supper, I just decide to make chocolate chip cookies. Don't tell anyone. I'm using Warren's recipe, but I substituted half of the shortening with butter. Um, this recipe is in cookbook number one. It's called, I think it's just called chocolate chip cookies or it might be called Warren's chocolate chip cookies. I don't know, but they're delicious. If he were to make them, it would be with just all shortening, but I do love the flavor of butter. So like I said, don't tell him, but I'm making them with butter. He'll probably be able to tell right away, um, but that's not going to stop him from eating any. I know that for sure. Be gentle because dad's not holding on to anything. Quite a load. <laughs> it is quite a load, isn't it? And Warren came in and said, we're all going fishing. Why don't you just turn the oven off and come along? So that's what I'm doing. Just going to come along. <laughs> so I guess cookies are going to happen. Whoa. I guess cookies are going to happen later. Mom, mm -hmm. this is ginger. That's ginger? Yep, it's What's ginger.
as I wrap up the evening here, just putting away the cookies that are left here into the cookie jar, I want to remind you to check out that first link in the description box below to see how seed health can help you support your gut health. And remember to use my code Jennifer20 for 20% off your first month's supply. Thanks so much, you guys, for tuning in today, and we will see you in the next video. Have a wonderful night.